Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Hello everyone, welcome to the very first episode of Cut the Tape entitled Pilot. Yes, this is the very first episode of Cut the Tape here at the World Famous Frame and Picture Shop. I am Rick Alvarez. Let's open some stuff. I got some stuff at TFCon and I thought I'd open it. Um, this was brought to me from England because I couldn't find these in the States. I could not find these in the States. These are the Evergreen Transformers horrible things starscream grimlock now i think starscream may have come out in the u.s uh but i have no reports of a grimlock coming out so before we get to the good stuff let's get through the bad stuff it's like they always say you gotta you should do the hard stuff first so that you can do the easy stuff last all right just get the hard stuff out of the way So I've actually never opened any of these, but uh, I asked my friend Tim, who was nice enough to bring me two of these from England, two of each, and he did. And so here we have, you remember those, like, I think it was like, two points of articulation. No, it was like five points of articulation. It was like the head can move, the arms went up and down, and the legs can move. There were, I think they were called Titan figures. It's a popular design style in South America. And these are basically transforming versions of that. They have some articulation. We got some knees, which on this character, though, I'm going to call shenanigans on the knees because on Grimlock, you kind of need the knees to transform him. No elbows, though. So it looks very G1-esque. Very, if you looked at it, you could tell, oh, yeah, that's, that's Grimlock. No doubt in my mind. That's Grimlock. So let's go ahead and... This is a very difficult transformation. We got we got some some things happening over here, and there's there's a tail, and now the tail comes out, and voila! Oh, little little bit of articulation in the mouth, yay! Oh, look at this! There's a little button. You know what? Sometimes the simplest things have the coolest features. There's a little tab here. You know what? That I appreciate. So Grimlock, Titan Evergreen. Oh, this one, look at this. The packaging even calls it Mighty Dinobot King. And it's eight steps to transform them. I call shenanigans on that too. Grimlock. That's gonna go in the back of the display case because it's tall. I'm not even sure why I'm opening these like this because I have another set sealed and I'm not intending on keeping the packaging. I'm just used to doing things a certain way. All right. If Grimlock was the mighty Dinobot King, what is Starscream gonna be? Cunning Decepticon second in command. Saw sorts of shenanigans going on with this. We can recycle these. Make sure you recycle. 
Would you call Starscream second in command? All right, this one. All right. There it is. No knees, so you're not gonna have floppy leg syndrome with this guy. He can stand, pass the test. Uh, it's like Cyberverse and G1 had a child out of wedlock and then sent that child to an uh, abortion post-birth. All right. Let's transform this, if you even want to call it that. Interesting, he does have five millimeter pegs. So if you had some sort of cannon, some spare weapons, you could actually attach them. I mean, that's, that's like masterpiece scale. See, if you paid attention, you would realize that Rick forgot to take out the blasters. So this guy actually has blasters and, and they fit in his hands or on the wings. And there you have it. Does it have landing gear? Nope. Does it land? Yep. It knows how to land. Grimlock, does he have a sword? Grimlock does not have a sword. But does Grimlock have five millimeter pegs? He does. He does. It means he can hold things. He's got slots in his hands for all the things that he holds. Okay. Interesting. Decepticon, second in command. Grimlock, Starstream. Let's get into that, some actual transforming things. We can recycle this too. All right, we'll save we'll save this big dog for last. This I lied. I didn't get this at TFCon. I got this at um, the Wall of Mark. This is Transformers movie, the best of Coronation Starscream. This is the same Starscream that's come out previously. Only now. He's in the movie line and he's got movie accessories such as his crown, a cape, and a chair and shoulder pads because it's the 80s and everyone had shoulder pads. Know your history. All right, so it's a window box, but it still has a little drawn scene from the film, which, you know, I think, I think for now we might save. Maybe we'll save this. Instructions and uh, warning label for how to activate self-destruct. Has an interesting bouquet. It's almost like it's stale. And I think that's because they're reusing the figure. It's not a new mold. <clears throat> I don't know how or who decided that the bro is gonna start packaging weapons in little bits of paper. Is that to protect the weapons? from getting scratched in the shipping? Or is that because getting another Ziploc bag or another bag and putting a tape, piece of tape on it is more expensive than this? So let's see what we got. We've got one, two, I've got four, four blasters. Why do I have four blasters? That doesn't sound right. Yeah. Hey, I got a set of free blasters. But they're different. 
one's painted, one's not painted. Curious, and there's also a mold difference in these. In the pegs, there's a mold difference. Not, and so the pegs have a mold variation, but inside there's a mold variation as well, a detail variation that is smaller on the non-painted one. Interesting. Interesting. Rather than go fabric, they went hard plastic. And you have this effect going on here. It just almost seems like, why is it hard plastic? I mean, okay, fine. It, I just, I'm curious. I'm genuinely curious. We have our throne, which you can do lots of different things with this. Hey, look, it's got five millimeter pegs in the back. You can stick stuff on it. Not a solid piece as I, I was expecting. It's actually a couple pieces put together. Interesting. Oh, also in here, we've got the shoulder pads. We've got the crown. And now for the figure itself, while it is an existing mold, um, it is a new paint job. I'm pretty sure this is the existing mold. So here we have Starscream. It's got articulated hands. Typical Hasbro detail. There is under spray as part of the paint job. No worries, I'll take a little marker, clean that right up. What I'm curious about is how all this plugs in. So interesting, these plug in. Oh, very interesting. So these plug in where the shoulder cannon should plug in and there's a tab that folds down to allow you to plug the shoulder cannon in there. So now the shoulder cannon sticks out very far. And if you turn the arm slightly, the whole thing pops off, which is, which is nice. I was just trying to replicate the pose on the packaging and that seems like some photo photographic trickery. They might have shopped it. They might have photoshopped it. Those bastards. Oh, the wing pops off very easily, which is great. You want that to happen. And then I assume the cape goes on the back. Very nice, the cape goes on the back. And the little crown upon his head, yay! You know what, for the first Hasbro Coronation Starship, Takara's done a lot of these. That's not bad, I mean, I guess you had Masterpiece as well. But this is like the first marketed Coronation Starscream that's come out stateside. So, yeah, I mean, the cape being molded does add a nice effect to it. But you certainly can't use it when he's sitting down on the throne. And honestly, who are we going to put on this throne? Is it Starscream? We're going to put Megatron on this thing. 
Yep. That's what we're going to do. It looks like it's got all sorts of stuff you can plug into the back. Like, maybe they were thinking ahead, like, oh, we should be able to plug Megatron's weapon in here. And Interesting. Very interesting. There's all sorts of plugs in the back. That's great. All right. Now, let's talk about Moon Studio for a, a little bit. So Moon Studio, third-party company, I had pre-ordered all six. And then Takara goes, hey, here's our, our version. It's going to be half the size and twice as much. I like official stuff because it's part of the line. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll get that one. All right, Moon Studio is, you know, very affordable, but do I need two Raidens? Yes. Yes, I do need two Raidens. Let me tell you why. This thing is super impressive. I opened the first one. I have no idea what his name was. I'm going to open this one. This guy's called um, Iron Arm. There's no tape to cut on this. But when this is like masterpiece, like like a Voyager masterpiece, like there's no other way to describe it. Like this thing is big and it's heavy. So I was at TFCon and I'm like, all right, let me, let me take these out of the box and I'll put them in train mode and I'll just get rid of the box. I mean, this thing was huge. This thing's huge. So I took the first one out. Anyway, thanks to my friend Sean for giving me a, a suitcase. I really, I really appreciate that. So we come with some accessories for Raiden. A blaster. Oh man, look at the size of this. It's a brick. Like if you threw this at someone, it would hurt them. It would even kill them. We'll find out later. Like I really wonder how these companies make money. If this is being sold for roughly a hundred bucks, 115, 120, depending on where you go. At the sh sometimes at a show, you might get a better deal. So they got to there's got to be like a 50% markup on them, plus shipping to the states. These are highly detailed, intricately designed, well put together figures of action. I just don't understand how these companies make profit. Like, what does it cost to produce one of these in China? Like, four bucks, five bucks to make one of these? Maybe. I don't know why he's called Iron Arm. This guy's obviously the crotch. These are where the legs go in. Anyway, this thing's gonna be like this tall, right? Like Fortress Maximus size. And the Takara one is gonna be like in this vicinity. Man, this guy comes out of the box ready to go. Ready to go right into combiner mode. Yup. Iron Arm, who's really the waste. He's the crotch, and we're we're gonna play around with that later. Instructions. Now they're not colored instructions, but it is highlighted in red which part you should be touching, which part you should be handling during each step. That's a better way of saying it. Thank you. So that was it. I mean, this is this is such a bullshit episode of Cut the Tape. I bought a Unicron head at TFCon, a big one, but I didn't bring it to the store. All right.
excuse me. Wash your hands, stay safe, and um, hopefully we get picked up for the season. So thank you very much. This is Cut to Tape, part of the TFYL PPE network. And uh, we'll see you soon.